Lord to Mike Steph, this marks a new beginning. Thanks for supporting, a total reinvention. The soul is still here, but the vibe's a little different. Unpredictable, hot the kids and the women. Sports of all sorts, music, mixed for living. Rep New York City, but ain't the politician. Always bring the heat, Steph, bacon in the kitchen. Big shout to y'all, I appreciate the listen. Donnie put the rest, but I'm still in the best. In the world of what I do, all y'all know the rest. I live it, I breathe it, I'm the whole definition. The pinnacle, the ultimate, I'm on a new mission. Salty thoughts to Mike Steph. Featuring the one and only Mike Steph. The best in the world of what he does. Tap in. What up, people? Welcome to a sprinkle of salt edition of the Salty Thoughts of Mike Step podcast, featuring a very irritated and tired Mike Steph, best in the world of what he does. Normally, I do these sprinkles of salts, especially the ones recapping, giving my quick thoughts, reacting to the Knicks won, Knicks win, or the Knicks loss, pretty much the Knicks playoff game in my car. Being the fact it was Friday, being the fact, like I said, I'm a little irritated and I'm a little tired and I'm actually hungry. I said, you know what? I'm going to forego all the festivities in the car. I'm just going to park it up. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to set the laptop up. I'm going to give you about 15, 20 minutes on what happened this past, bro, this past evening in Indianapolis. And, uh, and then I'm going to get the hell up out of here until my full-fledged episode this Sunday night. So I'm going to skip all the pleasantries and just get right down to the brass tacks of it. The Knicks lost game three in Indianapolis to the score of 111 to 106. Um, a great game, an outstanding game by Dante DiVincenzo in which he dropped 35 points. I won't say wasted, but opportunity was missed we had a chance we had the opportunity to go up three zip in the series everybody knew including the knicks including Thibodeau, including all the media pundits who i will talk about on sunday i'm not wasting my time dealing with these cocksuckers over there everybody knew that indian indiana was going to give us their best shot indiana knew if they went down three zip series is over no team no team no team in the history of the NBA playoffs has ever come back from a three zip deficit. And Indiana was about three minutes away from being on the three zip, three zip deficit. Now, going into this game, I could truthfully say that I really wanted this game as a fan. I said, you look, we put if we put the hammer down. And we give them three zip. That means we already got our split on the road. We're coming into this game with OG Ananobi ruled out before the game even started. We came into this game with Jalen Ro- I mean Jalen Brunson questionable, in which he did play. He played 38 minutes. And to their credit, to pretty much the whole Knickerbockers team's credit, nobody, not one person, other an excuse for the loss. But this is the game that we could have won this is a game we probably should have won and this is the game that probably will be used as a learning example of, of what to do in closing out a game which normally the Knicks are almost automatically closing out games I think there was one stat that I saw that I saw or read in the post game that this season entering the fourth quarter with the lead I believe they were 43 and 4. And this this pro season um matter of fact the last 3 games of this postseason, we were trailing at half and we came back and won the game. So there's a lot of missed opportunities especially in the fourth quarter. I mean paces got up to an early 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 lead like they normally do they was up by nine at the end of the first Dante 
you know, he was he was heating up. Dante had, I believe, 17 points in the third quarter. He had 32 points going into the fourth quarter. He ended up with 35. Now, part of it could be fatigue because he was chasing Tyrese Halliburton around and he was playing one-on-one defense with him the majority of the game. And now let me see how many... Dante, he played 43 points. I mean, 43 minutes. 12 of 26 from the field, 7 of 11 from downtown. Um, a lot of those misses were in the fourth quarter, but there was something in the fourth quarter that I, I wonder if things could have been played out differently. Uh, Dante pretty much held us down for the majority of the game. Uh, Jalen Jalen Brunson, he was picking his spots, and you could tell into the third, well, midway through the third, especially in the fourth, he was trying to take over. Um, They were saying on the broadcast that he didn't have his normal lift. Okay, once again, no excuse. No excuse. The one thing that I could look back and nitpick on would be that the offense got stagnant in the fourth quarter. I mean, if you want to think about it, in, in the third, in the second quarter, yeah, I know I'm jumping all around, but in the second quarter, we scored 38 points. We all scored them 38-34. We had a performance off the bench by Alec Burke. Alec Burks that I'm quite sure nobody expected us to have. I mean, nobody expected to, uh, to receive. He scored 13 points in the second quarter. He was perfect four for four from the field. And tell you the truth, if he would have probably been able to knock down at least one of the open two three-pointers he had in the fourth quarter, maybe he would have stayed in the clutch time. But listen, them's the breaks. The offense got stagnant. And Josh Hart, he had 18 rebounds. But a key stat, he had zero offensive rebounds. Zero. That's not like us. In the fourth quarter, I believe we had a nine-point lead in the fourth quarter at one point. And we just wasn't able to sustain the momentum that we had in the third for various reasons. Now, they would say, well, Neesmith, um, now all of a sudden, they, anybody wants to say that Neesmith is the defensive stopper, is the Brunson stopper, fuck out of here. Do you know how many times they would show replays and you could literally see tugging and, and, and slaps on the arm that wasn't getting called? And that's me saying this. But like I said, to the Knicks' credit, they didn't say not a damn thing. There was one stat that was Neesmith being the primary defender on Jalen Brunson. He was 6 of 18. So he was 2 for 8 with everybody else. Look, Brunson didn't have a great game. He was 10 of 26 for 26 points. That's the type of game that everybody wants to put out in the atmosphere that he used, he, he's a high-value scorer. He's a high-value shooter. A lot of times that a lot of times that uh that line is. 14 to 26 with 30 plus. I think he was three for five, three for six from the line. He missed the crucial free throw with under three minutes remaining. Josh Hart missed the crucial three free throw with under two minutes remaining. It happens. With the output that we got from Burks. McBride had a decent game. Achua did his part, did what he was put in to do. But I could, I could, I'm looking at the line score right now. Defense Enzo was 12 of 26. Jalen Brunson was 10 of 26. Between those two, they were 22 for 52 from the field. 
and we and we still only lost by five. And tell you the truth, the only reason it was a tie game, 106-106, and uh Nimhard. 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 Flung a 32 foot three point at the at, at the end of the shot clock. And it went in. He scored a total of five points. Albeit those five points were crucial at the toward the crunch time, but it's not like he he even had the look of it went in. Oh shit. So with all these things happening, a questionable call or a questionable non-call on Pascal Siakam, in which he clearly well, it's a bang bang call, but in my eyes, he clearly goaltended on the layup attempt by Josh Hart in the waning moments of the game. No call. But then on the opposite end, and tell you the truth, Dante should have known not to even swat at it. Siaka missed. He, he swatted. He touched it. Goal 10. Easy two points on a layup that had no chance of going in. Now, one of the other talking points with the last possession by the Knicks, in which we're down by three. We need a three. We have no timeouts left. And Brunson gets the ball, and he attempts to draw the foul. Well, he attempts to draw the foul and shooting three at the same time because he was under the assumption that the Pacers were going to foul and play the time game, play the free throw game. And clear as day, you can see uh, Neesmith hack down and make contact. No call. And Jalen Brunson flung it up. No call. Miss. Pretty much game is over. It's academic at that point. Are they going to allow this to continue to happen? Like, at the end of the day, I have really no complaints because it was physical on both sides. They allowed things on both sides. There was a, there was some, some questionable stuff. But this is what was expected to happen. Indiana was going to come home. Carlisle got fined $35,000 for implying that the NBA wanted a large market. It was the Knicks versus the Hicks. That's a, that's a headline for almost 30 years ago. Matter of fact, I believe it's from 30 years ago when the Knicks and the Indiana Indiana Pacers were having their awards in the 90s with Reggie Miller and and, 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 and all of them. I think Carlisle was on one of those teams. He didn't get no burn, but he was on one of those teams, I believe. And if not, he just put he just borrowed it from, from the New York Post and New York Daily News. But regardless, I'll take this. If we're going to lose this way, I'll take it. Now, the biggest question mark is going into game four, which is less than 48 hours later. It will be Mother's Day afternoon this coming Sunday. I believe the tip off is at 3.30 in the afternoon. And will OG Ananobi attempt to play? Do you allow him to try to attempt to play or do you just tighten up some of the miscues that happen especially in the second half especially in the waning minutes of the game and go straight up go head up with the eight men that we had and just say you know what we believe that indiana just doesn't have enough part indiana is not going to be able to pull this out indiana is a classic front running team and if you put the screws to them you give them a little a little pressure to shrivel up i mean because pascal siakam on the line was looking was looking tight halliburton on that 32 
foot heaved by Nimhard, Halliburton was to death. He passed the grenade. Nimhard just happened to bail him out. It's going to be a war of attrition. It's going to be a war of attrition. How is Jalen Brunson's foot going to bounce back? I mean, newsflash. Josh Hart actually got some rest. Actually only played 43 minutes. Hartenstein only played 43, uh, 38 minutes. I mean, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. This is one of those, one of those games that I'm, I'm like I said, I'm looking at the line score. Siakam had 26 points, nine of 14. Got to keep him off the foul line. Halliburton had 35. Miles Turner had 21. Got to keep him off the foul line. Seven to 13 for 21. 10, 10 rebounds. Now, I'm not going to lie. That's the, that's the most activity that he's had on the boards in his life. Especially toward the end when they got those two crucial offensive rebounds that led to the ultimate game-winning three. How often is that going to happen? How often are they going to hold a team to under, under 110 points? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. This, this is a series that, I, look, I said at the beginning, Nixon six. I didn't think it was going to be a cakewalk. I didn't think it was going to sweep. But when, but when stuff is, when the when when it's so close to being able to put things away, you know, of course, you want to make sure that there's nothing, um, there's no there's nothing left to chance, you know, because guess what, uh, Jalen Brunson, uh, he tweaks his he tweaks his foot, game over. You have a chance to go three up. I mean, three zero. You you do so. That's why he made a point to play. And plus, it's against our DNA to sit players and and, and try to preserve players. Look, we go hard, we go home. It's no in between. It's no in between. I mean, look, that one one. Whoopee, whoopee. It's really not much to say. It's not. It's it, it's it's funny because normally I come in here and I have a or for loss. I have a lot of angst. Normally I come in here or for loss, and I can look and try to see and pinpoint the reason why we lost such game, or the reason why, or maybe uh, one of the one one of the players on the opposing team or the coach did some dirty shit. Really can't say that. Listen, it came down to a thirty. Two foot heave, and with everything against us, and that's one thing about these Knicks, we have yet to lose back to back games in the playoffs. We have yet to lose games in which our back is firmly against the wall, and we've yet to come out flat. So it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Do I think Jalen Brunson? This is going to go 10 for 26 again? No. Do I think Neesmith is this Brunson stopper? No. Do I think that Hart is only going to give us 10 points? No. No, do I do not. I mean, it would, be, it would help if McBride can give us a little bit more, but at the same time, he's doing what needs to be done, and that's play ferocious defense. Like I said, we just need to keep Siakam off the line, and we need to keep definitely need to keep soft ass Miles Turner off the boards. And I'll take my chances with Halliburton. He was see, he was six of sixteen from three. Like, listen, if you're gonna chalk, if you're gonna if you're gonna throw up sixteen threes, I'll take my chances with that. And a couple of them were just breakdowns that I'm quite sure Tips is not going to have 
ever, 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 ever again. So that's basically it. You know, um, I just actually part of the reason why I came on was because all the dozens and dozens of salty thoughts of Mike Steph listeners and viewers out there. Maybe not the day ones, but the ones that have jumped on the bandwagon, so to speak, probably figured, well, or for loss, he ain't going to come out. He ain't going to show his face. Guess what? I'm not like those. I'm not like them. And they not. I'm not like them, and they're not like us. We show up, rain, sleet, snow, or shine. And listen, I there's nothing to be embarrassed about. But like I said, check me out late Sunday night, early Monday morning for a recap of game four, win or lose, but it would be a full-fledged episode because I got a lot to get off my chest. With this cocksucker dream on green, call, calling this run a fluke. I got a lot to get off my chest. Matter of fact, I got a lot to get off my chest with him. And I got a lot to get off my chest with uh, one Vinny Goodwill, who, to tell you the truth, I love I love his expertise. I love his articles. I love his podcast. I love his, his guest spots on Bomani and Brother from Another. But some of the shit that I heard come out of his mouth over the last couple of days concerning the Knicks, Dude, do you watch the games? Really? Really? Do you really watch the games? So, not to stay on here now, that's that's coming up this Sunday. On a full-fledged, on a full-fledged edition of the Social Thoughts of Mike Step Podcast. So, with all that being said, I'm gonna get up out of here. Yo, Stitch. Yeah, I don't got no nothing witty today. I'm not I'm not with the jokes today. Yo, Stitch, you got anything to say? What'd you say? Yeah, he said Nixon six also. What else is that? And listen, I'm trying not to be vulgar today. I'm really not. You know, I mean, because I don't. Not that I'm looking, but you invited somebody. You invited them to something that I don't even think you have. Well, he did say, "What he went try to suck on." Rhymes with stitch. Actually, rhymes with stick. Yeah, all right. I'm 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 jumping the shark. Um I'll see y'all later. Goodbye.